you know what? I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I'm not going to sit here and let you besmirk one of the greatest main characters made in the last decade. Oh, do you think you hopped in halfway through a video? No, you didn't. This is the beginning. But this anger, it's been boiling up in me for weeks. Because a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago, me and Danny on my podcast, Otaku's Anonymous, were doing a tier list of all the main characters in Shonen. Well, not all the main characters in Shonen, but all of the important main, the, like the top 40. And with a tier list, you have a bunch of different letter grades that you can assign certain characters to. Some characters are D grade. Some characters ruin the show. Some characters are S grade. And in that episode, and specifically in that tier list, me and Danny decided that Denji, the main character of Chainsaw Man, was an S-tier character. And boy oh boy, did people not like that. Now I think that's mostly because some characters like Ichigo and Naruto and Luffy weren't S-tier characters, and therefore people were more upset that we dared put Denji above their beloved characters in this tier list. I actually don't remember if any of those characters were S-tier. I know for a fact Ichigo wasn't. Looking back on it objectively, Naruto and Luffy could have been S-tier. For a fact that Edward Elric and Guts were there though, and Thorfinn. But in the slew of comments of people very upset about the fact that me and Danny thought Denji was an S-tier character, I saw a lot of people greatly misunderstanding Denji's character. Because here's the thing, Denji is in an incredibly weird spot as a main character. When Denji first came onto the scene as the main character of Chainsaw Man, everyone's like, oh, ho, he's so relatable. He just wants to eat and touch boobies, I like him. And while if you were to boil down the essence that is Denji, that is one of the things you would pull out. That's like looking at Naruto and saying that he loves swings and ramen. You're being so reductionist with the way that you're looking at this character that you're missing everything about them that makes them important and cool and honestly, a trailblazer. And while you could mark up a good amount of people not understanding Denji's character to the fact that the majority of the Chainsaw fandom is anime only, there are still moments throughout the amount of anime that we have from Chainsaw Man where Denji displays that he is much more than this boobs in food character that people believe he is. And I think Denji as a character is actually one of the most unique and compelling main characters that we've seen in the last decade. Because while there's plenty of main characters in Shonen who are fantastic examples of trusting in your friends and always persevering, and Denji Denji is almost the exact opposite of that. Everything that Asta and Naruto and Ichigo and Luffy are, Denji is the polar opposite, and yet he propels his story forward with as much velocity and momentum as any of those previously listed characters, setting up a new standard for how a main character can be written and also acting as a breath of fresh air in the incredibly saturated and copy-heavy shonen genre. But just me saying that Denji is unique and different from all the other main characters isn't enough to convince you of just how incredible a character Denji is. And thus today, for the first time, in a long time, we're gonna be tapping back into the series that made the man. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, because today we're talking, you know nothing about Denji. But before we get to doing deep psychological dives into fictional character psyches, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you wanna watch that podcast that generates all these hateful takes in Nick and Danny's direction, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Utaku's Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime. This week, it's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Or if you just wanna look like you have hateful anime takes, guys, go ahead and meander on over into my merch store, Utaku'sAnonymous.net, where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. So Denji, the protagonist of part one of Chainsaw Man and the co-protagonist of part two of Chainsaw Man. How can I sit here and say that a character is not even the main protagonist of his story anymore is the best MC we've seen in a decade. It's because you're talking to a person who applauded Togashi, the mangaka of Hunter Hunter's choice to take Gon out of the story 320 chapters into Gon being the main character of Hunter Hunter. Being able to introduce other characters as protagonists in your story is just a symbol of the fact that you've built a compelling enough universe that regardless of who's at the helm, people will still read. But considering the fact that people enjoy part one historically more than they enjoy part two, you could tie all of that back into Denji as a character and how compelling the story is when told through his perspective. But why is Denji so compelling? Why is he so different from other MCs? And why is the story better when told through his perspective? Well, let's get into it. Denji's story opens as a vagrant, cutting down demons for the mafia in order to cover the debts of the last remaining family he had. Denji lives his life pennies at a time as he's trying to pay off an almost insurmountable amount of money back to the Yakuza. And thus, basically, when we meet Denji, he hasn't surpassed the first level of the needs triangle. That is to say that Denji is so focused on staying alive between his job and the fact that he has no money that he's never stopped to think about the things that he wants in life. And all he can really be focused on is the things that he currently has and has to do. And the only thing that Denji has 
is Pochita, who came to him technically after a battle against the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse in all of the weapons hybrids. But Denji didn't know that. Denji just kind of looks at Pochita like a demon dog with a chainsaw on its forehead that he can use to cut down devils for the Yakuza. And thus when the Yakuza are taken over by the zombie devil and eventually cut down by the Public Safety Committee and Denji, Denji is finally free of the debt that's been keeping him in the bottom level of the Needs Triangle his entire life. And thus Denji is a 16 year old who for the first time in his life is allowed to want things. And thus Denji as he becomes a main character in this story is essentially gaining sentience. He for the first time in his entire life is gaining humanity and he's not entirely sure what to do with that humanity. See imagine you were born at 16 years old with the ability to talk, walk, and think. All you technically know how to do as a 16 year old is survive. You, to use psychological terms here, have access to your id, but not your ego or your super ego. Id, for those of you who haven't taken Psych 101, are your basic biological urges. You need to reproduce, you need to drink water, you need to eat. Ego is consciousness, thinking that you want to do something, like, oh, I want to go for a drive today. And super ego is morals, so telling you while on that drive today, they shouldn't veer into oncoming traffic. Thus, when our story with Denji begins, he's incredibly naive and rough around the edges, almost childlike, which is interesting because most shonen MC are inherently very childlike. However, the way that Denji is childlike is different from every other shonen MC. See, while Naruto and Ichigo and Luffy are childlike in the way that they still want to hang out with their friends and they believe in the power of friendship and they believe through their power and their power alone they'll be able to change the world, Denji is a more realistic picture of what childlike looks like, as he's brash and uneducated and easily molded by the people around him. However, the most astounding thing about Denji and his personality is that even though he's childlike and brash and naive, and he's like a deer trying to take its first steps after being freed from the Yakuza, he still has an insane amount of empathy for all of the people around him. As with his newfound power as Chainsaw Man and joining the Public Safety Division, he takes it upon himself to save as many people as possible fairly often. But Denji doesn't only find his footing as a main character the means of being empathetic, as Denji also has multiple times throughout the story where he shows a childlike intelligence. Like in his battle against the Infinity Devil, where he realizes if he continually eats the blood of the Infinity Devil, he can become something akin to a perpetual motion machine. Or like in the battle against Santa Claus, when Denji realizes is that he can light himself on fire to weaken Santa Claus through the power of light. But the thing is, we as viewers and readers join Denji in the weirdest time of his life. We join Denji as he switches from struggling to survive to surviving with ease, which forces Denji to realize that there's other things on Earth than just surviving. It essentially opens Denji's eyes to free will and wants. And as a 16-year-old boy who's being depicted as an actual 16-year-old boy, the first thing that comes to his mind is usually sexual favors. Thus, Denji Denji, now understanding what it is to want, as he lives with a roof over his head and food in his stomach, time after time takes on difficult and dangerous missions under the promise that he'll get some kind of sexual gratification from the person giving him the mission. And the first of these missions that he accomplishes is when he saves Power's cat Meowy from the Bat Devil. And thus in exchange for saving this cat from the Bat Devil, Denji is able to feel up power. However, instead of being ecstatic at the fact that he got to cop a feel, Denji realizes that the intimacy of this moment fades the second that it's over. And that this hollow exchange of a sexual deed for a favor has done nothing to spark the flame of his soul. And thus, through the medium of a rather coarse and lewd act, we see that Denji is beginning to understand human emotions. But at the same time, we're also seeing Denji begin to scramble and realize he may not know what he wants. And that's genuinely the interesting thing about Denji. See, at the top of your head, name any shonen MC. I can tell you right now what they want. Asta wants to be the Wizard King. Luffy wants to be the King of the Pirates. Naruto wants to be Hokage. Ichigo wants to protect his friends. For those of you who are caught up with the Chainsaw Man manga, what does Denji want? Because I'll tell you right now, it's no longer sexual gratification. In fact, even currently, Denji in the manga is searching for what he wants. Is it to spend time with Naota? Is it to live a regular life? Is it to have a girlfriend? Is it to have sex? Is it to have multiple girlfriends? Denji doesn't know. Because for the vast majority of Denji's life, he hasn't had the ability to want. Couple this up with the fact that Denji finds his humanity by losing it. Because the thing that frees Denji from the boot heel of the Yakuza is him becoming a hybrid with the Chainsaw Devil, one of the most dangerous and sought after devils in the entire world. And thus, while Denji is scrambling to try and figure out what he wants and what direction he wants to head with his life, he's also living in fear that becoming a hybrid of a devil is causing him to lose any semblance of humanity he has. And thus, while Denji is figuring out how to become human, he feels as though he's losing his humanity. And this is only corroborated by the fact that whenever Denji enters his Chainsaw Man form, he becomes an incredibly bloodthirsty, devil-like 
entity who screams about how the blood of the infinity devil might taste novel but because it's coming from somebody who's screaming and suffering it tastes like jam and well it might be up to the reader to see that denji turns much more devil-like while transformed at the end of part one of chainsaw man we see denji undergo the full transformation into the chainsaw devil that is to say we see denji fully turn into chainsaw man not just the hybrid and in this form there is no semblance of humanity within denji as he's entirely unable to communicate however while in this transformed state Denji is still trying to go through the paces of what he believes are a human life. He goes to a burger restaurant, he goes on a date to an arcade, all while as far away from being human as possible. And that moment is meant to symbolize to us how much of Chainsaw Man exists in Denji and vice versa. Because in this fully transformed Chainsaw Man state, there was still parts of Denji trying to go through the motions. And that's meant to show us why, even when Denji is fully human, he's afraid that there's a part of Chainsaw Man inside of him, slowly turning him into a death. Now, naturally, finding your humanity by merging with what a most powerful and feared devils in the entirety of the universe at 16 would be a lot to go through for anybody. But not only does Denji find his humanity at 16 while losing his humanity while battling against an entire warehouse full of Yakuza members and getting riddled with gunshot holes, but the aftermath of the scenario is almost worse, as Denji, after stumbling upon free will and humanity for the first time in his life, falls directly into the lap of Makima and the Public Safety Division. See, Denji's experiences with power made him realize that lust exists way below love on the emotional spectrum. Thus, instead of just copping a field, Denji realizes with his newfound humanity, he wants to fall in love. And since Denji doesn't really understand what the concept of love is, he puts everything that he has into being loved by Makima. And we see multiple times throughout the story that Denji is forgoing lust to try and accomplish love. As not only does the power incident give him no gratification whatsoever, but after a night of drinking, Himeno, another attractive woman, makes a move on him, trying to convince him to sleep with her. Now, objectively, Himeno does throw up in his mouth a couple hours before this, but if Denji was so singularly focused on having sex with women and feeling women up, he would have closed the deal here. Now, we're not going to talk about the legality of that possible fornication session. What's important is that Denji says no. As he's identified by this point in the story, what he's not looking for is empty lust, but love. But there's a problem. Denji is so desperate to be loved, he would do anything to accomplish it. And thus, he clings to Makima. And the clinging to Makima only gets worse when he begins to use that love he has for Makima as a way to block out all of the bad things happening in his life. See, outside of finding humanity and free will for the first time, Denji is also experiencing a myriad of emotions for the first time. See, love is as new to Denji as grief and desire. And thus, Denji has no idea how to handle an emotion like grief, which is something that he should feel on a somewhat regular basis basis, as almost everybody important around him either dies at his hands or at the hands of people that he believed were important to him. Anime-only watchers, let's go la-la-la for a couple of seconds here. But Denji, just in the matter of a couple of weeks, loses people important to him like Himeno and Beam. He has to be the one personally to kill Aki. Makima kills his best friend, Power, in front of him on his birthday. And then Makima, through controlling Angel, kills Reze, possibly Denji's first girlfriend. And then by the end of part one, Denji has to to be the person to kill the one person who he loves and to the one person he was using as a coping mechanism to help him with all of this grief, Makima. But long before he could bring himself to ending Makima's life, he clung to her to help him with the grief and myriad of emotions he was feeling for the first ever time, going so far as to give over the entirety of his consciousness and his will to Makima to live as a mindless dog. And what's so interesting about this is Every single one of us has felt this way. Not that we want to be controlled by an evil, domineering devil woman, but that sometimes it would be so nice to not have to be in control. That if we could just let somebody else take the reins and take a backseat to our own lives, it would be the most freeing experience known to man. And there's a word for this feeling. It's called depression, and this willingness to give up the reins of your life is why people join cults or incredibly strict religious groups. Same thing if you ask me. Because by giving up all of your power to either a human being claiming to be the godhead of a newly found religion, or by constraining all of your humanly choices to a 3,000 year old book, you limit the amount of choice that you have in your life as you believe in some greater being than yourself. And this is exactly what Denji does. Denji doesn't just become a sub because he's obsessed with Makima. Denji hands his life over to Makima because it's all he knows how to do. Within just a couple of months of gaining free will and emotion, 
Denji has realized that that's not always a good thing. And thus the first thing that he does when given the opportunity is give those things back up. And in one of the most unique twists in all of manga history, when Denji realizes that he needs to be rid of Makima, it's not because of the things that Makima did. It's because Denji believes he wants to be one with Makima. So when he cuts her down with a chainsaw made of power's blood, it's not to exact revenge. It's because he loves her and he wants nothing more than to be with her, which is why after he cuts down Makima, he eats her entire body. Which, albeit, was kind of necessary because until she was entirely consumed, people all around Japan were dying because of the agreement she made with the Prime Minister that stated every single time that she died, a random citizen around Japan would die of the way that she died. But it's also meant to symbolize the childlike ideology that Denji has, as the only way that he could think of to be one with Makima was to consume her. As the concept of being spiritually one with her by cutting her down and keeping the memory of her with him is beyond Denji. And now that Denji has achieved what he always wanted, being one with Makima, in part two, we see a somewhat different Denji. As Denji has now realized that accomplishing his goals is a possibility, he's now started to want for larger and more extravagant things. It's actually, in my eyes, an incredible example and depiction of how human desire and greed work. As let's say hypothetically, I was to go to East Sentinel Island, an island that houses arguably the last untouched tribe of people on Earth. It actually might be North Sentinel Island. These are people whose ancestors migrated to this island thousands of years ago, and thus all they know on this island is the island. But they speak a language nobody on Earth outside of this island knows. They have a culture entirely different from anything we can even conceptualize in modern day society. Religions we've probably never heard of, and so on and so forth. But because of this, they're also an incredibly rudimentary and basic civilization. Now, let's say hypothetically you were able to convince one of them to come to the new world. Well, in the first year of their life, they would be astounded by things like cars and sliced bread and even grocery stores. Stores, things that seem passe to your average American or first world inhabitant. As time progresses, they would become acquainted with these kinds of things. And while maybe every once in a while they would see something that they had never seen, like a helicopter or an airplane, slowly but surely they would begin to adapt to modern day society. And thus the things that they would want would go beyond the scope of bread with jam on it. And slowly but surely as they adapted to modern society, they would want all of the things that your modern societal human being has or wants. Simple desires give way to grander desires. That's just how human greed works. You want $100,000 until you get $100,000. And then you want $200,000 and three and four and a million and two million and a billion. And that is exactly what we see Denji going through in part two of Chainsaw Man. Denji, now free from the reins of Makima, wants lavish breakfasts and multiple girlfriends, and is willing to expose himself as the Chainsaw Man, and if it means he'll get more attention from the women that love Chainsaw Man. And multiple times, Denji tries to go about ways to expose his identity as Chainsaw Man, like by telling Asa that he's Chainsaw Man, or leaving his school ID at the scene where Chainsaw Man battled against the devil. And while this might make us think that Denji has become obsessed with the idea of being with as many women as possible and simply wants fame, which would lead a lot of people to say, okay, he hasn't changed that much as a character, especially when you consider the fact that he's allowing women to sit on him for money, he's selling used cigarettes to homeless people. It would make you believe that Denji is still obsessed with women and wants money to fuel his lavish, and lustful desires. However, the real reason that Denji is allowing himself to be used as a seat for a woman outside of the fact that he likes it and Toski Fujimoto also probably wants to be used as a seat for a woman is because he's trying to use the money that he's gaining from all of these weird ob jobs to fund the education of his adopted little sister. Nauta, who is the reincarnation of the control devil. And it's revealed while on a date with Asa that Denji is saving and earning money specifically to make sure that Nauta has a proper education and a comfortable upbringing, which is the first time that we ever genuinely see Denji care about somebody who's not himself. See, one of the biggest plot points of chapter one is Denji pondering as to whether or not he would be sad if any of his friends died. And while one could argue that he is sad when his friends die, as the loss of all of his friends sends him into such a deep despair that he gives up consciousness and lives as Makima's dog, whether it be Himeno, Aki, Power, Makimo, or anybody he meets in part one, Denji never puts anybody's desires above his own. And therefore, by the time the part two comes around, Denji deciding to forsake some of the lavish parts of his life so that Naota can have a good life is the first time that we ever see Denji give something up for somebody else. And this, and the possibility of getting it in with a couple of girlfriends are what motivate Denji in part two of Chainsaw Man. But just because Denji now has the strength to show compassion for the people around him doesn't mean that the trauma of part one doesn't still stick with him. 
As throughout almost the entirety of part two of Chainsaw Man, Denji is seen incredibly haggard with baggy eyes and a sad demeanor. This mostly stems from the fact that everybody in Denji's life is trying to tell him how to live this newfound life that he's trying to make for himself. Because in the time between part one and part two, Denji has been moonlighting as a vigilante. And therefore there's mass groups of people who believe that he's a hero and mass groups of people who believe that he's a devil. And therefore the public safety division wants Denji to stop being Chainsaw Man, to go and live a regular life. Because if this division grows between the people who like Chainsaw Man and the people who don't like Chainsaw Man keeps on growing. Not only will Chainsaw Man get stronger as there's now hate and fear being garnered towards the concept of him, but also Japan has the possibility of a civil war breaking out. And thus Denji now has to wrestle with the concept of what he wants to do with his life. Does he want to be Chainsaw Man? Does he want to work odd jobs to make sure that Naoto is raised properly? Does he want a girlfriend? Does he want steak for breakfast? And he doesn't no. See, until part two of Chainsaw Man, Denji has always had somebody to tell him exactly what to do. And until part two of Chainsaw Man, Denji has listened. But now with the coming of part two of Chainsaw Man, Denji is no longer listening. The public safety division tells him to stop being Chainsaw Man. He doesn't listen to them. When they threaten to kill Naota, he says he's going to continue to be Chainsaw Man and he's going to continue raising Naota. Denji now in part two of Chainsaw Man is rallying against the idea of anybody controlling him because of the trauma he received in that regard in part one. And we see this trauma lash out occasionally in part two. As during his date with Asa, when Asa tells Denji that he doesn't have to think about anything, he gets flustered and angry because it reminds him of how Makima treated him. He just wants to live the life that he wants, but he isn't sure of what that is yet. He knows one thing and one thing for certain. He wants that life to be with Naoto, and he knows one thing and one thing for certain is that he wants Naoto's life to be more regular than his. As even though Naoto is the second coming of the controlled devil, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Denji is still adamant that she goes to school with all the other kids her age. And I think that's kind of the coolest part of Chainsaw Man, as Denji, from the moment that he gains sentience after being freed from the Yakuza, has been looking for love. But he had no idea at that point that there was multiple kinds of love. And thus Denji, in a way, even though he doesn't know it, has already accomplished everything he's ever wanted. And now, it's just about him realizing that. And that's why I think Denji is so much more compelling than so many other shonen MC. To me, he's massively more human than almost any other shonen MC. He goes through grief and despair. He goes through moments of not knowing what he wants to do. He goes through moments of boredom. He has existential crises about whether or not he wants to do what he's currently doing. He has trauma and pain that he pushes down, but he can't necessarily get over. And yeah. He, he wants to touch some boobs and he wants to smash, but I'd argue that's pretty average for a 16 to 18 year old boy. But what do you guys think? Do you appreciate Denji's character or am I being over analytical? Tell me in the comments below and to why you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell. Listen, you surround me with Makima, Himeno and power and my mind's only gonna be on one thing too.